the next person we have is uh, Melly. Uh, is going to talk a little more about uh, Graph Studio. So, Melly, if you can uh, uh, unmute your microphone, share your screen. Uh, tell us a little bit about what you're going to talk about with uh, Graph Database and Analytics, if you would. Thank you, Dan. Um, like my fellow uh, presenters here, I'm also very excited to, uh, I'm excitedly looking forward to the uh, event in March. One reason is because we will be meeting in person after two years of not being able to do so. And meeting in person is always a great place to make connections, have all of these interesting conversations and so on. So speaking of connections, um, Graphs are all about connections and finding out all kinds of interesting things about your data by looking at how your data is connected. So we have uh, several sessions at this event. I will just talk about a couple of them. And what I'm going to do in my session is to try and highlight how you can trace connections in your data by modeling data as a graph. And I will be using a specific example, but I also hope to make it general enough that it's applicable to various different scenarios. So looking at just a basic, basic example, just to kind of get the concept across is you have data prob probably in tables and you have questions such as is entity A connected to entity I, which I can figure out by looking and doing some self joins on this table or if you have multiple tables doing joins across tables. But when you model your data as a graph, it kind of becomes instantly uh, obvious that, oh, this is, you really have, there is a connection between um, A and I, this goes through D and G, E and G. And not only that, you can see that there are multiple connections between A and I goes through A, D, E, and G, or it goes through A, B, and C, and reaches I. And in my session, like I said, I'll be talking about some actual use cases. I'll, I'll, I'll work with one use case and then highlight how this is applicable in multiple use cases. Now, continuing on the theme of connections, if one were to ask a question in the data, is A directly connected to C? And we don't see an edge between A and C but there is an edge from A to B to C. So A and C are indirectly connected, not directly connected. And these are the kinds of things that graphs are really good at identifying. Is there an indirect connection? How many hops away uh, is this connection and so on? So let's now uh, look at the specific, one specific example that I'll be talking about in March. And which basically uses the metadata in the database to try and see how you can uh, identify which users have can have privileges on which data entities. So what happens when you're granting privileges and roles is you can very quickly have a lot of nesting. So you have, let's say, a privilege granted to a particular table that could be part of a role and then another DBA might create another role that uses this role and so on. You can virtually have unlimited levels of nesting and then you could lose track of who has access to what data. So an ability to trace this, to find out which user has access to which data, one way to accomplish that is to model the data in these metadata tables as a graph. And the graph would look something like this. You have users as entities, roles, and privileges. These are entities are also known as vertices in a graph. And then you have the relationships between user and role is the has role relationship. And then they have the has priv relationship and so on. And you can see a lot of self-directed edges around the role vertex. So, because roles can include other roles and so on. So this is, a model of the graph that you could create from the data in these metadata tables. And once you do that, you can do things like ask graph queries of this, from this graph. You can say, you can see here in bold, so this is an example of a graph query. 
And uh, you can see here it's a SQL-like language and it has the match pattern in the middle line here. And you can see here the bolded part is basically saying, find me all connections from a user to a role and I can go through multiple levels of nesting. The plus sign here indicates one to many levels of nesting. So I just want to traverse this path as far as I can go to find at the end all the roles that this user has by virtue of nesting. And from there, I want to derive what privileges that user has. And our Graph Studio tool uh, that you can use to get started with all of this very easily also has an integrated visualization component that you can use to then and execute this query, get the results, and kind of show them visually uh, in something like this. And you don't always have to only look at the visual. You can look at a table listing of your results. You can see here that this particular user, Grindelwald, has these three, this chain of roles, app role one, app role two, app role three, and so on. And from there, you can figure out which tables uh, this person has access to. Um, and again, here's a, a slightly different query where we're saying for every user, look at one to five hops away. So this is the kind of thing that Graph makes it easy for you to do. You can say one to many, one to five. I want to find everything that can be reached from this particular uh, vertex in which in this example is a user. So this has implications in financial services industry, in manufacturing and so on. So some of my colleagues are going to be um, talking about graphs as well. And my colleague Giant, also on the product management team, will be give you a, will give you a preview of our plan for Oracle Database 23C, where we have support for using SQL to query property graphs. So the examples I was showing now was the property graph query language because the SQL standard was not yet there. So in SQL 2023, the standard will include the ability to create property graphs and query property graphs. And that's what we will be uh, also talking about. And finally, the last interesting session is we have, there's also the concept of RDF graphs, which is a different graph model from the property graph model that I was talking about. And that has lots of applications in the world of data sharing. And my colleague Jason from the from Oracle Energy and Water is going to be talking about how they're using knowledge graphs and ontologies to share data coming in from different entities. You can see here different utility companies. Each of them has their own schema, their own format. And how do you bring all of this information together and munch it all together so that it becomes a, a, an asset that can be shared easily for uh, benefits for everyone. And with that, I think Dan, that brings me to the end of what I wanted to share here. Hey, Mary. This is Philippe. Uh, may I take a second? Because I, you know, I, I think your your topic is just fascinating. We we're so interested in being able to consume this as business users, and that's exactly what you're showing here. Are you going to? So I'm I'm a fan of of, of this, as you can hear. But are you going to talk about Studio as well in your session and how the interface that it can represent for users like me who don't know all that SQL, but can use it be with Studio? That's a great question, uh, Philippi. And definitely, we will be talking about Graph Studio. It's something that's available with Autonomous Database. And as you said, it is geared more towards a low-code environment where you can create a graph using the automated modeling tool. You can have an you can have a notebook where you can run queries. So it just makes it easy to get started with graphs. So I will definitely be talking about that. And we'll be using Graph Studio in a hands-on lab as well. So I'm hoping oh. people can join that. Join us for that too. Fantastic. Can't wait. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Mary. Thank you, Philip. And thank you, Dan. Thank you, Melly. Uh, appreciate the uh, the intro to uh, what you're going to talk about, the preview.